Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I am super excited for this episode. But before we dive in, let's ground ourselves. Where are we? What is Harmonious? Why are we listening to this? Harmonious is the fundamental business architecture that will disrupt the way you look at your business and it's optimized for small business success. The Fortune 500 is doing it wrong and we're copying it, which makes it wronger. And we don't want to do that anymore. So on this show, we dive in to the fundamental disciplines you need to run your business, grow and scale at a rate you never thought possible before. And we talk about the triad of business, which is mind, body, business. Today, I have a feeling we're going to be a lot in business. We're going to be in the harmonious architecture and we're going to dive deep on finances and optimizing your profit. hey oh, that's a fun conversation. Who doesn't love that? So let me welcome to the show, D. thank you for joining me. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we have uh, we have a fun topic today, how to increase your profit without working more. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about what you do to help people do that? Yes, that is like the um, what everybody wants, right? Um, I'm a so, clickbait, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but really, it is. Um, it's really achievable, you know. And that kind of is like the thing that a lot of times when you kind of like see that kind of slogan out there, it's um, it really is kind of just like clickbait, or it just kind of sounds like too good to be true. Um, but as a fractional CFO and profit strategist. We really work on understanding what the key drivers in your business are or what the key areas where um, maybe things are working well and work on optimizing those so that you don't have to work more, that you can just let your business, the areas of your business that are already shining, just continue to work and earn that additional profit for you as opposed to having to take on more clients work more hours and all of that. So it's really kind of jumping in, understanding, um, you know, the ins and outs of different areas of your business and where those strengths are, and then leveraging those in your strategy. I, I love this so much already, because I think a lot of consultants, which you could put both of us in that category, obviously, but I think uh, more operational consultants and business generalized consultants, if you will, they focus on what to do, and, mm -hmm. and the more of the things that you should be doing as a business mm -hmm. owner, as a business, whatever. Um, and our personal philosophy and what we say all the time to our clients is we spend more time telling you what not to do mm -hmm. than what actually to do. And it sounds like that's coming through when I hear your answer to that question. Yeah, absolutely. It can definitely be the same thing, right? Like you can, you know, do certain analyses in the business and learn like areas where things aren't working well too, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can see, okay, um, you know, for example, one of the things that I do a lot is we'll do like a project profitability analysis where we look at your profitability for projects and by project type. And, um, you know, we'll try to leverage or really try to have you focus on the areas where, you know, by service type, what types of projects are just naturally more profitable or even kind of, you know, to go hand in hand with that, it doesn't necessarily have to be the service type that's more profitable. You have to like keep digging a little bit more, right? Like, is that most profitable service type? How long does it take you to do? Can you only do one of those a month or a quarter, you know? So it's kind of like a balance of what what's working, what you can do better at and, and making that work in your favor so that you don't have to. It's really just kind of like that standard saying, right? Right. Work smarter, not harder. That's right. That's what we're all here for. But everyone's doing the wrong end of the 80-20 rule. So let's focus on the right side, right? So tell me, before we go deeper into actually how to do this, I'm curious about your background. How did you get into being a fractional COO? CFO, excuse me. Look at me projecting on you. I'm a fractional COO. You're a CFO. How did you get into this? So I have a background um, as a CPA. Um, I worked in public accounting, a mixture of public accounting and private accounting for um, over 10 years. And for the last four years, I've had my own business where, and I've kind of had a little bit of like, you know, a journey to to get to this, this spot exactly. Um, but over the past four years, I've really kind of worked with clients and realized the certain things that they need, um, right? And really like listen to what the market is asking for and what they need. Um, and so that's kind of where how I've kind of gotten into this path. 
Um, in the past, I really loved doing a lot of um, like hands-on management work. Like when I worked in um, like private industry, I was a controller. I loved like working and having a team of people. Um, and so, you know, I kind of started my own business in that route. Um, but now like I really enjoy the strategy piece of it. And so that's kind of where I've moved into the fractional CFO perspective of it. And the profit piece, you know, I think has been um, like really fun to to work through because I mean, really, I mean, that's why all, you know, business owners are in business, right? Like to make money, but not to have to do it by working and, you know, running themselves into the ground, right? Um, and, you know, I think that it's also an important piece to focus on because a lot of times, you know, you, you'll you hear out there in the business world, especially like in an online, in the online business world, um, you know, to focus on serving clients that are, you know, high ticket. But when we work with clients who, um, you know, by focusing on increasing profitability, all, all, all clients at any level of business, right? Like they deserve to have these skills and this information readily available for them. Um, so that's like one of the key pieces that I really have been focusing on recently is making sure that whether you're, you know, a seven figure business owner, or you're just starting out, like you have the information available to you, whether it's, you know, not necessarily me doing it for you, right? Maybe it's not a done for you service, but you still have that, um, those tools that you have access to. I, I love that you make that available to all levels too. And it's, what is your, I guess, range of product offerings? How do you serve both ends of the spectrum there? Yep. So most of the time, like, you know, obviously my done for you services are, you know, the higher ticket, um, you know, like monthly retainer or fractional CFO um, type work. But then I also offer like strategy sessions so that they're available to, you know, all, all levels of business owners. And then also some digital products that are, you know, a lower ticket level where, you know, I really give all of the information and you know the resources templates to be able to use to um kind of do the analysis work on their own um but then they kind of have to do a little bit of the like work behind it also yeah that's that's awesome i, I love that everyone has the strategy as accessible to them and i want to dive in there a little bit because so that's what separates an accountant from a cfo a coo mm -hmm. from a business consultant mm -hmm. is you know us, me and you, we are focused on the strategy, the structure, hence the harmonious architecture, right? It's it's how the overall business works and how the overall accounting and profitability works. So let's let's dive in on the strategy. Where do you start with your clients to first, I guess, diagnose where they are and then develop that path forward to maximum profitability? Yeah. So whether I'm working with somebody on a monthly basis or not. So I also have um, like quarterly packages, right? So like that one might be like a good, um, a good one to kind of walk through. So I'll have a set uh, like six different um, analyses that I work through. So I'll go through, um, you know, like reviewing the at, at a minimum, the profit and loss statement for whatever the current period that we're looking at compared to what that prior period is and investigating what those differences are and what those variances are and what kind of drive those. Um, we'll also look at, you know, projections to actual and kind of understanding what happened there as well. Um, we'll take a look through uh, like our pricing. Pricing is a big thing that I work through. So whether we need to take a look at the pricing formula again or whether we're just looking at how our pricing of our services or the product, how that, that estimated cost compared to the actual cost that the client ended up incurring. Um, and then we'll look at like project profitability and looking at um, kind of like the trends there by service type. We do a lot with KPI, so I'll look at, at that as well. So once we kind of go through all of those different analyses, we start to identify certain trends, things that worked well that quarter, um, how we hit our targets, or maybe we didn't hit our targets. And based on the results of all of those, then we can start developing the strategy that we use to implement for the next quarter. Um, and 
you know, you might come up with maybe five things that, you know, kind of stood out to you in that quarter that maybe worked well or didn't work well. But I always try to just focus on three things that we'll focus on for the next quarter. Because if you take off, like you take on more than, you know, you can handle, it's just too much. It's too overwhelming. Things fall off. You you don't really give each item like what it's worth and what it needs to be, you know, in order to actually see the, the, the end result or the goal of what you're trying to accomplish. So that's kind of like the framework, you know, we have the different analyses and then based on the results, we develop the strategy that's used for the next quarter. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and so this sometimes gets under the skin of people who specialize in finance, whether it's accountant, CFO, bookkeeper, you know, anywhere on the spectrum, finance is actually not a standalone discipline within our harmonious architecture. But you just hit on the reason why. And I, I want to kind of dive into that for just a second. So you talked about strategy, you talked about metrics, you talked about tying that into the operations, the pricing, all this stuff. So that for us is why it's not a standalone discipline, because it, it really touches a lot of the other ones. So mm -hmm. A in harmonious is analyzed. That's that's typically your metrics. So obviously you're looking there. Finance by definition is numbers, it's metrics. Mm -hmm. um, it's also in rad, risk and defense. I mean, if you don't have a sound financial strategy, and that's obviously what you do as a CFO, you're opening yourself up to risk of really going out of business. <laughs> I mean, <Yep>. ultimately, <laughs> you don't have money, you don't have a business. Yeah. Um, a number of other areas too, operations, operate. Um, so I, I love this conversation because a lot of people, they really put finances last because they love the service that they provide, the product that they make. And it's kind of backwards because like mm -hmm. I said, if you don't have money, like if you're not making money, you're not, you're not in business. Yeah. So then talk to me a little bit about if let's say you're talking to me, what does my business look like if I need to hire a CFO or I need to work with you? Mm -hmm. What? What does my business typically look like or your client's business typically look like when they approach you? Yeah. So for, you know, for a client that is looking to have like that monthly retainer, um, you know, typically we say, you know, you're at like that at least like 500,000 um, of like annual revenue. Um, and it's really when you're kind of getting to the point where you I mean, of course, you know, maybe finances just aren't your your strong suit, right? So like that's a struggle for you. But, you know, you're spending more time, um, you know, just like seeking out information of where to focus. And, you know, you're not sure like how the whole picture, right, fits together. Um, and, you know, the, the real thing with why you hire somebody on like a fractional, you know, perspective is, you don't have the budget, right, to have a, a team member on <laughs> all, all the time. Um, so having somebody in that, like, just that fractional capacity where you, you know, have somebody that you can email and reach out to, you know, as much as needed, or you just, you know, need a 30 minute or, you know, an hour call with every week. Um, you need somebody else to take a look at your numbers and see, what's going on and making sure that you are on track, how you're, you know, meeting your projections, things like that. Um, so that's really kind of the uh, ongoing support level, you know, like for what a business looks like. Um, but, you know, like I said before, I really aim to serve um, clients of all business levels, right? So, um, you know, I've had clients in the past where I just do, you know, project based work and they were just starting, but they wanted to really know that their pricing was nailed down. You know, they felt that that was going to really set them up for success in their business, not only really understanding like that their pricing was nailed down, but feeling confident in knowing like where they had wiggle room when talking with clients, right? Because a lot of times or this client in particular, they, um, they didn't really have like set packages, right? Like there was some changes and things that you could include or not include, you know, based on what job it was. So she really wanted to feel confident when talking to prospective clients that her pricing was going to serve her, but also, 
you know, she wasn't going to quote too high or quote too low and, you know, kind of like box herself out of, you know, potential clients. So, um, you know, again, like it can just be on a specific need basis, right? Like maybe you just need a specific analysis performed or a quarterly basis where we just look at the quarterly, you know, strategy and develop that strategic plan for the next quarter. Or you could need that ongoing monthly support where you really need to have somebody that you're constantly reaching out to and, you know, depending on and asking for advice and what, and making sure like you're on the right path to hit where you're, you're aiming to go. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's so important. And we, we do the same thing with our clients, not, not in terms of finance, but in, in terms of planning the direction of your business, we do it quarterly and you do need to review your business, your finances that often, but most people just review their finances at the end of the year and mm -hmm. on April 15th. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you're just set up for failure if that's all you're yes. going to do. Yeah. When you, when you, when you look at things at the end of the year, I mean, I'm sure, of course, <laughs> let's at least make sure we're doing that, but. Yeah. Okay. That good point, good foundation. Can, yes. <laughs> yeah. You can only respond to things reactively at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whereas if you are looking at things quarterly, you can see the trends, you can see how you were, how you performed on a, you know, short period of time, and you can start to implement changes quicker and you're more proactive in, um, in your response to what is going on in your current business environment. And that will help you to see, right, like the increases in profitability or just, you know, in general, like whatever it is that your current goal, you know, is to attain, you're going to start to see that work as opposed to if you're just looking at something annually. Yeah. So if, if you get nothing else from this conversation, just understand the COO, the CFO, the C-suite in general mm -hmm. is looking forward. And mm -hmm. yeah, we're reacting to things that have happened, but we're also focused a lot on planning and strategy and directing the business. So if you get nothing else, do do that. Do that in some capacity. And I would encourage you in terms of finances, unless you're an accountant or a CPA or you have this down solid, please reach out to D. Please reach out <laughs> to an expert to help you with this. Now, D, you have um, you have a download on your website. I want to put your website on the screen here. If you're listening and not watching, this will be in the show notes as well. But can you tell the audience a little bit about what you have here? Yep. So if you go to my website, um, dthomashoff.com, you can download my freebie. It's all about how to leverage data in your business to drive your strategy. So in that freebie, you know, I'll, I'll I jump into kind of the key areas where you can quickly and easily start leveraging the data in your business. So a lot of times it just feels overwhelming, but when it's broken down in this freebie into just, you know, I think we have three ways in there that you can start, right? Because it's all just about starting. Um, and, you know, kind of when you jump in and you just take a small step, it leads to bigger things. Um, so you can download that there. Um, and you can also follow me on Instagram. My handle is uh, dthomashoff again. And, um, you know, kind of check out the tips and tricks and all the things that I share there as well. That's awesome. I was going to ask you that next. Where can we follow you? You've answered that <laughs> question. So again, for those of you listening, watching, I'll put all of that in the show notes down below um, on whatever platform. This has been a great conversation and I'm I'm so glad you didn't come on, come in with, you know, specific tactics to increase your profit because strategy wise, business growth and profit wise, I mean, it, it varies and you know that, but every business is unique. So Thank you for that. And that's how I know that you are a respectable professional because <laughs> I I always like to make fun of the people that are like the three ways to increase your profit yeah. for who, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you for coming on. This has been awesome. And listen, for you watching, listening, I appreciate you. We do this for you. I hope this helped. If you need a, more insight into your finances, into your financial strategy moving forward, Website's on the screen. It's in the show notes. Go download the freebie. And also, if you want to figure out how your business touches finances, all the different disciplines that touch finance and how your business is performing, we have our assessment that I talk about all the time on this show at whatif.com. It's our bad assessment. It'll give you a live score in all 10 disciplines. And we can I can tell you exactly how your finances are showing up. 
And then I can send you on over to D and say, here is how this business is performing. Please fix it. And she will. So go ahead, download both things. Go take our assessment, download D's freebie and be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all those beautiful things on whatever platform you're on. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thank you for watching and listening.